I'm leaving my husband because I found out that he has been making fun of me behind my back to his ex. My husband, male 45, and I, 36 female, met about six years ago. We have been married for one year. When we met, I was very fit and athletic. I started gaining weight, however, after suffering two miscarriages and the loss of my mother to cancer. I was very depressed and barely got out of bed if not to go to work. I stopped exercising and instead started eating junk food. I gained 40 pounds in two years. Under this time, my husband, then fiancé, was very supportive and loving. I felt guilty and tried to give him an out several times, but instead he proposed and we got married last summer. Since our marriage, I've been feeling much better and it showed. I have lost around 20 pounds so far and I gained back my muscles and abs. He was so happy to see me feeling better. On his computer, however, it was totally a different story. He was talking almost during our entire relationship to his ex-wife about me. His ex-wife, 46 female, left him about 7 to 8 years ago for her colleague. The relationship didn't work, however, and she tried to get back together with my husband. He had already met me, but they stayed friends, mostly via chat, texting, since she lives 12 hours away. My husband was complaining about everything about me. My job, my depression, my cooking but mostly my weight oh why would you do that like it's such a stupid move out of anyone in the world that you could complain to you complain to the one person oh a significant other would never want you to complain to an ex like is it that hard complain to your mom your dad your dog your best friend your sister your neighbor your boss but you had to go and complain to your ex-wife who tried to get back with you how do you not see this as a problem? He was telling her how disgusting I was to him, how he even found it hard to share the same bed since I snored like a dog. He sent her pictures of me while sleeping, sometimes in underwear, with comments about my belly, double chin, back boobs, etc. She found these pictures extremely amusing and she came up with the name White Whale. They both found it hilarious and now this is what they referred to me as. It is baffling also because they're both old ass people they're in their mid 40s almost 50 and you guys are talking like this about your wife this just shows he never truly loved you if he can even talk about that to anyone let alone an ex they don't flirt exactly or talk about being together or starting an affair but they do say that they miss each other and they reminisce about the time they were married she's more flirtatious and he really enjoys it whatever he's telling her isn't what i experienced with him i don't disgust him he tells me that he loves me all the time we have a great and passionate nightlife and the way he touches and makes love to me is so great he must be a really good actor if he was really disgusted by me and he hates the few times we have to sleep apart he's lying and i don't know why he's doing it he's lying to one of us and i'm not sure if i want to know who he's lying to and why i decided to get out of this marriage and leave this behind me right now i'm acting like everything is normal but i've started looking for a new job in another city and a place to rent i also started birth control pills in case something happens between us and i have talked to a lawyer to prepare the divorce and start the process once i'm gone one thing i'm not going to do is fall back into depression and weight gain i will not allow it what a waste of love he has been story time when i beat up my best friend for hanging out with my boyfriend behind my back okay so let's call my best friend rosie me and rosie have been best friends since ninth grade i met rosie when i went to the principal's office for the first time and i didn't really know her at that time there was only rumors about her that she would smoke and bully people just because i was not that type of friend I was very low-key and I only prioritized my relationship with my boyfriend. I got in trouble for the first time and was sent to the principal's office and that's where I met Rosie. We became friends when both of us were making fun of the principal. He was bald, short, and he was pretty funny. And that's when I started to really like her. I added Rosie on Snapchat and I noticed that we had the same taste in music and both of us were really good at drawing. So one afternoon she invited me to hang out at the park and we had a good time but I did notice that she was always on her phone getting text messages from different guys. The next time she invited me to the nail salon and we went together. She took me to this very fancy nail shop that was inside the mall. We got our nails done and I noticed that she had ran away. As soon as she was getting her nails done she instantly started running into the parking lot. I was in shock. The nail salon started calling the police and they asked me if she was my friend. I said yes and I felt so bad for the nail salon people that I do not care. I ended up snitching on my friend. I gave them her phone number and her name and when I went to the parking lot, I found my best friend hiding and laughing. I told her to never do that again because that totally embarrassed me. So her mom picked us up and we went over to her house. So as soon as we get into her house, we start talking about our boyfriends. And at this time, she had a couple of guys she was talking to. 
Me, on the other hand, I was just with my boyfriend, and we had been together for two years. My friend starts asking me questions like if me and my boyfriend have our alone times, and if we had our first time. I honestly didn't get a weird vibe, because she was very open, and she shared a lot about her past relationships. But she, on the other hand, wanted to find out everything about me and my boyfriend. So she asked me if me and my boyfriend have alone time. And it was getting weird because my friend was only asking about my boyfriend and what he was into. I felt no type of way because at first my friend had already told me that she was into 6 feet light skinned men. And my boyfriend was only 5'9 and he was very white. So I did not have any weird feelings. Okay so when we got to my best friend's house, after she literally embarrassed me at the nail salon, she proceeds to ask me about my boyfriend's likes and preferences. And I should have figured it out. That was a red flag. Me and my boyfriend did not spend any time alone. We only went to the park, to the movies, and we both still had our V cards. The question that had me so hot was when she wanted to know what size my boyfriend was. I stopped her and I told her that I would not answer that. She was like so friendly about it. She was laughing and giggling and I told her that was not funny. She continued to share her other boyfriend's sizes. I literally told her that I did not need to know. So we stopped talking about my boyfriend. And we continued to talk about our nails and how pretty they were. So her mother dropped me off at my house and I received a text from her. The text said, hey girl, when can I hang out with you and your boyfriend? I'll try to get a date so it could be like a double date. At this point, I was literally just going to test my friend. I seriously wanted to catch her staring at my boyfriend being flirty with him or trying to talk to my boyfriend i was gonna be watching her one thing about my friend she was pretty and she was a very funny girl and she had like a tan she was very pretty i was not gonna hate but me on the other hand i got a lot of compliments and saying that i could be a model growing up i played sports in the other hand and i was very smart in all my classes me and my boyfriend were literally the perfect couple thought she was gonna be my friend i didn't know where this weird behavior came from because like i said i was just thinking about it she said she liked very tall men on the light skin side and my boyfriend is 5'9 very pale skin so there was no way that she could like him right so there's this friday that comes and we go on the double date she actually brings a light skin tall guy okay so i honestly never told my boyfriend that my best friend was asking questions about him because I did not want him to feel awkward when we went to the double date. We get to the double date and my best friend brings a light skinned tall guy. So we're chit chatting, we're having a good time and I see that my boyfriend uses the restroom. Two minutes later, literally my best friend goes to the restroom as well. And the men and women's bathroom are next together. I am so impatient, they literally took 10 minutes to get back. I was so hot that literally my friend's boyfriend asked me if I was okay. I told him, don't you think they're taking too long? He said, yeah, they really are. So they get back and I see my boyfriend with a serious face. But my friend was acting way normal. I knew something was completely wrong, but I brushed it off. We get back home and I noticed that my boyfriend for two weeks has been acting so different. He's been acting cold. He's been acting distant. And he does not call me babe no more. I wait for two days more. And the two days pass by and I start confronting my boyfriend. I literally sat him down and I told him what was wrong. My friend on the other hand acted completely normal. When my boyfriend is sitting down acting so nervous, his phone is blowing up. I take the phone away and I answer the next coming call. When I answered, the person said, babe, where are you? I literally said, who the fuck are you? My boyfriend takes the phone away and breaks it. He bursts into tears and he tells me that that was my friend. He started catching feelings ever since we all went bowling. I cried and cried and begged for forgiveness. During school, I went to my best friend's class and I literally whooped her ass in front of everyone. Ended up breaking her nose. My wife and I bought a four-bedroom house in Pennsylvania that my son lives in. Our son went to college in Pennsylvania and wanted to stay in the area. So we bought the house as a second home. We live in New Jersey and commute to Manhattan for work. We figured that he would have a place to live and we could visit every so often and spend some quality time together. We pay taxes and services, maintenance on the house. Our son pays for his groceries and the house utilities. All was going well for a few years. Our son meets a girl and they get serious. We met her and she seems nice enough. They announce their engagement and she moves into the house with our son. Now for the problem, the wedding. We hold a little get-to-know-you barbecue at the Pennsylvania house. My son and daughter are there. 
as are our son's fiance and her parents and her sisters. We all seem to be getting along well. My wife, daughter, and the fiance go into the house along with her mother and sisters and my son. A few minutes later, my wife and daughter come out and are really upset. They come over and tell me that we're leaving and driving back to New Jersey. I try to find out what happened. Once we get back to New Jersey, they calm down and tell me that our son and his fiance, along with her family, don't want us at the wedding. According to what I was told, we're not their kind of people. I was livid. I called my son and asked him what the hell this was all about. He tells me that her family feels that we're not good enough and will embarrass him at a family wedding and that we're all uninvited from the wedding. I let a week go by to calm myself down and drive back to the Pennsylvania house. The new future in-laws are in the house along with the fiance. It appears that they've all moved into the house. They ask me why I'm there. I tell them that since we aren't invited to the wedding, I was coming over to talk to my son. That's when they tell me to leave their house. I lost it and told them that they had 30 days to get out. I also say, tell my son I'm selling the house and he can find somewhere else to live with all of you. I go to a realtor in town and list the house for sale. They call my son at work and tell him what I said. Apparently, they thought that he owned the house. He calls me and asks why I'm selling the house. I tell him that I paid for it along with the taxes on it and it's mine. He was living there rent free, but since he doesn't want us in his new life, he has to get out. I tell him the same that I told his future in-laws. They have 30 days to get out, then I'll get a lawyer and get them evicted. Am I the asshole for taking a hard stance on this and throwing them out of the house that we own? My 40M, wife, 38F, is keeping me trapped in a dead marriage. We started discussing divorce in late 2019. Due to a variety of things, it kept getting put off pandemic, kids' school became distance learning, move for work, etc. In 2021 we moved to a state where a no-fault divorce can only happen if both parties agree. We moved together so that we could still co-parent and see our kids regularly. She has now changed her mind, and in this state there's nothing I can do. I moved to a different state, we were near a border, so that I could file there. After meeting with an attorney, I was told that yes, I can file in my state, but she can claim jurisdiction, because our kids live with her, and move the case to her state, effectively putting me back at square one. I was taking the no-fault route because, it was really just a gradual breakdown of our relationship. Sleeping in separate beds, then separate rooms. We effectively lived, as roommates and nothing more. There's no traditional at-fault reasons like drug use, adultery, etc. We spoke about it earlier today, for the first time in a while. She claims that she's keeping the family together because she feels it's morally right. She also has this belief that there are other entities at play, like some outside force that is controlling our lives. I told her that was batshit, completely detached from reality. She says that both are our parents. Stayed together even when times were tough. Yeah no, both of our parents stayed together through misery, and neither were a good example of a healthy relationship. There is a lot of backstory. Early in our marriage she assaulted me, because she thought I was cheating, I was not. She had key loggers on my computer, voice recorders in my car, all sorts of shit that I now realize were massive red flags. I guess I didn't end it. Then because I couldn't bear the idea of not being with my son, who was four at the time. Over the years, things got a lot better, and we had our second child. Things were even pretty great for years. After that, but it's just evolved into nothing over the past three to four years. We haven't been intimate in at least three years, and at this point I wouldn't even consider it. Here I am now though. I am miserable. Always. Angry. Frustrated. I sit in my office at work with a constant lump in my throat because I'm constantly upset. I cry in the shower on a pretty regular basis. I'm seeing a mental health counselor once a month. Getting. Out of bed each morning is a monumental task. I love my kiddos more than anything, and try to do as much as I can to be a great dad for them, but it's becoming so hard. I feel powerless. Hopeless, depressed. I'm considering antidepressants just to have a chance at feeling normal, but I know that won't change my situation. I don't know what to do. My daughter, 16, Megan, just finished her cancer treatment. She's lost her hair in the process and she's been incredibly insecure because of it. She no longer meets friends nor welcomes them out of her home nor even meets family in person. It's been bad to say the least, but her stepbrother, Ben, 18, has been making it worse with his nagging comments and jokes about her looks. He tried taking and posting pics of her secretly to share, but I shut that down even though my husband thought it was just harmless teasing. My husband's sister's wedding was last week. The family wanted Megan to go, but she didn't want to. I spent so much time trying to help her and convince her to start socializing again and see family. She agreed under the condition that I let her wear a wig, which I agreed. Not only that, but I took her shopping to pick her own wig and she looked beautifully stunning in her pixie hairstyle wig. My husband and Ben laughed when they saw it. I don't know why. We went to the wedding and everything was going well till this happened. We were all sitting and we were talking about Megan's look. Suddenly, Ben reached out and pulled her wig and exposed her head. I was shocked. I froze when Megan yelled and then took her wig and ran. Ben, his cousins, and some guests started laughing. I was upset, especially when I looked over my shoulder and saw my husband sitting next to his mom and laughing. I lost it on Ben and berated him in front of everyone, then took my stuff, got Megan, and got into the car and went home. Ben and my husband didn't have a ride back home and my husband kept calling me but I didn't respond. 
He came home asking me about leaving mid-wedding and upsetting his sister and then leaving him and Ben without a ride home. I argued with him about how Ben embarrassed Megan and humiliated her publicly, which must have ruined what's left of her self-esteem. He said that it was just kids teasing each other and that I overreacted and Ben had no malicious intent, he was just messing with her. I said I was sick of it, but he said that this is their way of bonding as step-siblings and I was getting in the way of it and being overprotective and unreasonable. We didn't talk after that. Ben is refusing to apologize and his dad is backing him up. So am I the asshole for taking my daughter and leaving the wedding after her stepbrother pulled her wig? What's the meanest thing you've done and not regretted? When I was younger a friend and I were walking around the neighborhood looking to do yard work for money. A middle-aged guy with an overgrown front yard took us up on our offer when we knocked on his door, and told us that he wanted his lawn mowed, edges trimmed, and his bushes trimmed. We did a great job, and after the better part of two hours we knocked again to collect the $15 we had agreed upon, except he didn't answer the door. He hadn't left, his car in the driveway was evidence of that. We tried the back door, we tried the side garage door, and we even went home for a glass of water and took a break before going back and knocking again. When I say knocked, I mean making an absurd amount of noise on just about every exterior surface of this man's house. We could hear the TV on inside too. At this point it became clear that he was attempting to scam us out of our work. His doors were all locked, we could hear him inside, and he wasn't coming out. Well, being the vengeful 14 year olds that we were, we walked to the hardware store and used some of the money we earned later that day to purchase road salt. A large quantity of salt. Late that night we visited his house and generously salted every living plant in the yard, and used a fertilizer spreader to evenly salt his front lawn. We killed this man's entire front yard for the rest of the year his yard was a very visible brown wasteland in an otherwise lush green neighborhood. People who own multiple pets, what is some drama going on between them right now? I once had both a cat and a guinea pig some 25 years ago, and they seemed to hate each other. Whenever my cat got near the cage the guinea pig would start squealing aggressively at the cat, and the cat would swat at the cage with a look of utter disgust. That was a daily routine. It was the first thing that happened in the morning and it lasted minutes, then they didn't bother each other for the rest of the day. The cat could even nap on top of the cage at times without any protest for either. It was just part of the day for them. That drama just had to happen every day. It went on like that for seven years. The guinea pig got really sick because he was old and I realized he doesn't have long left. I picked him up out of the cage and put him on my lap so he didn't have to die alone. The cat just came up and licked the guinea pig and laid on my lap beside him until he passed. Apparently the cat loved him all along. The seven-year drama was just their thing. That still amazes me. I have a cat, a puppy, and a dog. Cat likes to lure the puppy under the bed, and he can get under, but gets stuck in the middle where it's the lowest. I have to rescue him, usually around 2 a.m. and he wakes me up by scratching the floor trying to get out. Cat also likes to knock off things from the counter he knows puppy should not be chewing on. Puppy and cat like to wrestle with each other, but dog doesn't like the ruckus and barks at them to stop. Cat doesn't like the barking so then he chases dog. Puppy follows cat and there's a train of three, Tom and Jerry style through the house. At the end of the day though they are always in a big cuddle pile, so I think they'll be okay.